In 1875, a Union veteran of the Civil War named Robert Smalls had to go to court over the ownership of his home. It was being contested by a former owner who had lost it to foreclosure due to taxes. In the end, Robert prevailed and was able to keep the property in Beaufort, South Carolina, where he would live out the rest of his life. A property where, ironically, he had also began his life and lived as a child. The property dispute turned out to be a small challenge to a man who had endured so much in order to leave his mark on American history. The former owners of the home had purchased it from a man named Henry McKee, who was also a former slave owner and who had once owned Robert Smalls. So how did a former slave end up buying his former owner's home? There is more to the story. Robert Smalls was born in 1839 to a slave named Lydia. Other than speculation, there is no record of who his father was. He spent his youth living with his mother in a small cabin on Henry McKee's property, while the two worked for McKee. Eventually, McKee, at the request of Robert's mother, hired Robert out to work in Charleston. For this arrangement, Smalls was allowed to keep a small portion of his wages, while McKee pocketed the rest. He worked a few jobs, including waiting tables, before finally finding work on the docks of the Charleston Harbor and on a cotton ship called the Planter. Robert turned out to be a fast learner and became so familiar with the coast of South Carolina that he was able to work as a boat pilot. It was also while in Charleston that he met and married an enslaved woman named Hannah Jones. Though the marriage was not legally recognized, the two were able, with their respective owner's permission, to move into an apartment together. At the time they married, Hannah already had two children, and together they produced two more, Elizabeth and Robert Jr. When the Civil War broke out, Robert continued working on the ship as his mission changed. The planter became a dispatch vehicle, delivering arms and other supplies for the Confederacy, as well as helping to plant mines. It was also around this time that Robert began to fear that his wife's owner might one day sell her. When he approached the man about buying her himself, he was shocked that the only price the owner would agree to was $800, of which Robert only had $100. Because of this, Robert started thinking about his work on the planter and started seeing it as a possible opportunity for freedom. He told Hannah to be ready in case the chance ever presented itself. And on May 12, 1862, it did. On that night, with the planter loaded with a transport of cannons, the white crew members, as they were known to do, decided to go on shore, leaving Robert and the other slaves unattended. Later, at 2 a.m., Robert and the remaining crew members hoisted the Confederate flag and left the dock. After picking up their waiting family members at a nearby wharf, they sailed the planter out of the harbor. Smalls put on the straw hat and jacket of the well-known captain, a man named Riley, and even mimicked the way he stood with his arms folded. That coupled with his knowledge of the codes and signals that the Confederacy used, they were able to move past the various checkpoints, knowing full well that, if caught, they would likely be executed. Once they cleared Confederate territory, they took down the Confederate flag and raised a white bedsheet that Robert had asked Hannah to bring along. They eventually encountered and surrendered to a Union vessel called the Onward. With a $4,000 bounty on his head placed by the Confederacy, Robert went to work for the Union. He used his knowledge of the waters around Charleston to provide intelligence about Confederate activities, and after helping the Confederacy plant mines, he was able to help the Union disarm them. Using the hero status he had obtained, Smalls was able to convince Secretary of War Edwin Stanton to enlist black soldiers. Once this action was approved by President Lincoln, Smalls participated in recruiting approximately 5,000 soldiers himself, including former slaves for one of the first black regiments. During the war, Small served as a pilot on a number of vessels, including the ironclad Keokuk, where he was injured when it was sunk by enemy fire. Eventually, however, he found himself back on the planter, where his bravery got him promoted to captain. For this, he earned $150 a month, making him the highest paid black soldier in the war. In 1864, after the South fell to Union forces, Smalls returned to the town of Beaufort, and, using the reward money he had earned from capturing the planter, purchased his home. Not only did his own family live there, but he also took in the widow of his former owner and allowed her to live there as well. In 1865, when the war officially ended, Robert stood on the deck of the planter in Charleston Harbor during a celebration where the American flag was raised. But Robert Smalls' place in history didn't end with a civil war. After spending much of his life illiterate, Robert learned to read, and in 1867 established a school for black children. In 1873, he was appointed Lieutenant Colonel of the 3rd Regiment of the South Carolina State Militia, 
and later promoted to Brigadier General of the 2nd Brigade South Carolina Militia and Major General of the 2nd Division South Carolina State Militia. In addition to this, he went on to serve in the South Carolina State Assembly and Senate, as well as five non-consecutive terms in the United States House of Representatives, all while facing racism and threats of violence. In 1915, Robert Smalls died from diabetes at the age of 75, leaving behind a historic legacy of heroism, bravery, and service. In the early 1970s, his home was designated as a National Historic Landmark, and on September 16, 2007, the United States Army inducted a logistics support vessel, the Major General Robert Smalls, into their watercraft fleet, the first Army vessel named for an African American. And in 2023, the United States Navy renamed the USS Chancellorville, a ship originally named for a Confederate victory, the USS Robert Smalls. Robert Smalls once said that the path to freedom is paved with courage and determination. And not only did he say it, he lived it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see what story we'll explore next.